Hello, Sandy Moss here once again from my closet. And out of the closet today, I've drawn some duck decoys. Decoys that were once used for duck hunting by duck hunters. Uh, and these are family decoys for the most part. Most of these were in my family. Uh, when I was young, my father died and my mother remarried and she remarried a duck hunter. A fellow named Jim Sellers, who was a heck of a stepfather to me. And, uh, who came from a family in Lancaster, Pennsylvania that was fairly locally famous for their decoys. And these are some of the decoys that my stepfather used and his father used and his brother used in duck hunting in southeastern Pennsylvania along the Susquehanna River and later down in the Susquehanna Flats at the head of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, so let me talk about these decoys because uh, they're kind of special. Uh, first of all, this one here is a decoy that was made probably in the 1930s by my stepfather's father. And his name was Walter Sellers and he lived in Quarryville, uh, Pennsylvania and in other towns in the area. Uh, and this he made by hand and if we look at this closely and in the right light, you can still see where the marks from his draw knife uh, spread over the body to shape this rather fat body. And the head has a kind of an elongated head. This is a, a, a decoy designed to attract canvas back decoys. It's one of the larger and more famous of the American, of the American uh, wild ducks. The males have this reddish head with a black bill a white back where they get the name canvas back from, black breast and black tail. Uh, and uh, they're quite striking ducks when you see them alive and in person. This one on its underside has a, a lead weight, has a leather tie, a tie anchor rope to it. And if you read the, the stamping on the hand stamping on the, uh, on the weight here, it says W.D. Sellers, that's Walter Derrydinger Sellers, uh, in Washington Borough, uh, Pennsylvania, R.D. 1. That, that's uh, Washington Borough is just outside of Lancaster uh, on the Susquehanna River above, Lancaster, above uh, York, Pennsylvania. So that's one of my grandfather Sellers' decoys. These two decoys here, actually these three decoys, were all made, handmade by my stepfather's brother, Bob Sellers. And these are, first of all, this is a, meant to be a, a greater scop of or bluebill decoy. It has a black head, not a red head. Uh, and it's got a different kind of weight underneath it, sort of elongated, pointed sausage kind of weight. Again, a leather tied for the anchor rope, and it says Sellers on it, and that's for Bob Sellers. This is another of his decoys. This is this is made to look like a redhead decoy, very similar to the canvas back, but with a with a sort of a, a bulging forehead rather than a flat forehead. Not quite as large as the canvas back, but again, a very favored duck because these things were very tasty to eat. You might notice that these two decoys, both by Bob Sellers, have a, a, a sort of a pointed shape of a tail as opposed to the blunt square tail of their father's, of his father's uh, decoy. And this is a later Bob Sellers decoy here, and its tail isn't as pointy, it has a more rounded shape to it. This one has been repainted. This, these are the original paints, I think, uh, on all of these decoys, but someone painted this decoy later on. Now, the, these Bob Sellers decoys have heads on them they were made by a different person. Okay, Bob Sellers uh, had his uncle 
who was my grandfather's brother, his name was John Sellers, he made the heads for um, Bob Sellers' decoys, and he carved them out of elm wood, which is a little bit unusual for decoys. The rest of these decoys are made of pine. So we have three Bob Sellers decoys. This decoy here was used <coughs> by my stepfather, Jim Sellers, and this was not made by him. This was made by a professional uh, decoy maker in Harvard Grace, Maryland, which is just at the mouth of where the Susquehanna River dumps into the head of the Chesapeake Bay. And his name was R. Madison Mitchell. And he made a lot of decoys for my stepfather. I, I know we had at least 600 of his decoys in our house at one time. Because when they hunted the, for ducks in those days with these kinds of decoys, they used large numbers of them. They might set out as many as three or four hundred decoys in a day to hunt for ducks and pick them up after the duck hunting was ended. But my stepfather, Jim Sellers, used these decoys in a little bit different way. He had larger decoys made, and he hunted in the Susquehanna River around what is today Peach Bottom, uh, Pennsylvania, <coughs> and the Susquehanna River there has been dammed up by the Conowingo Dam down in Maryland, and it forms this large lake uh, a mile wide or more, and he would set his decoys out uh, at the beginning of the duck season, as many as a couple of hundred or three hundred of them, and he would anchor them with heavy anchors, and he would leave them there the whole duck season, going out every day to hunt over these decoys. You really couldn't do that today, I don't think, because People would like to be like this. He likely to, to uh, uh, steal them. So there are four decoys. Now these are all large decoys. The ones that were used down in the uh, Chesapeake Bay were for just daily hunting, not seasonal hunting. And these were larger, so they could be seen from farther away by the ducks migrating. And they also have typically a shape to them. You really can't see it well here. They're kind of a V-shaped bottom, not a flat bottom. And that's because in the river there was there were currents, either wind driven or, or from the water moving if the if the river had a lot of water moving through it. And by having a deeper V bottom, these birds would not swing so much side to side when they're tethered by their anchor rib but would tend to steer this way and steer that way and look very lifelike in the water. So these are all what we call upriver or river canvas back and redhead and bluebill decoys. Uh, just I should point out that in the last, I guess this was last year, there was a, an issue of Decoy Magazine and in it is a major article that is about the cellars of Lancaster County. Their most prolific uh, decoy makers along the Susquehanna River. And these are examples of decoys. Some of these are older than this one here, but this one here pretty much recreates granddad's decoys. And this is a picture here of Walter Sellers in his, in his duck boat. And another picture over here which shows my stepfather Jim Sellers on either side and in the middle of Walter Sellers, the father, and on the other side Bob Sellers, the two brothers. So it's kind of an interesting article to me because it, it discusses things that I remember well. This is, again, Jim Sellers here, uh, much as I remember him in the 1950s. And these are decoys that uh, are made by Madison Mitchell here, very much like this one, and other decoys that Bob Sellers and the Uncle John made. Again, more pictures, more decoys. So this was a this was kind of a famous uh, in in uh, 
Pennsylvania, particularly the Susquehanna River Valley, this is a fairly famous group of, of guys. And one other decoy I have here, only because it's a typical Susquehanna River decoy. It has this V shape, it's kind of exaggerated, sort of a big, big headed, kind of like, a little bit like uh, Granddad Sellers. This, this was one I found in a local auction here, and it has a, a flat plate on the bottom, similar to that one, and it's been stamped by an owner's name, and this says, uh, it's made by Ralph Gipe, G-I-P-E, from Crayley, Pennsylvania. Crayley, Pennsylvania is about 20 miles up the Susquehanna River above where my family hunted. And uh, this guy was a, a, a gunsmith who lived in Crayley in the 1950s, and he made a very similar kind of decoy. Now I mentioned that these were hunted in a, in a fashion which down on the Susquehanna River is a little different and at the head of the Chesapeake Bay, they're hunted from boats which are large. They're 18 foot long boats. They're usually painted white, which you don't think of as a duck hunting boat color. Uh, and they're sculled. That is, a fellow takes a big long 16 foot oar, sits across the, uh, the uh, boat transversely with the boat headed this way, and takes this big long oar, which it projects through a hole in the stern, and moves it back and forth to scull the boat forward. So they set out all these decoys and then they go up uh, river and tie an anchor off to a buoy and sit there and wait for ducks, migrating ducks to come down and sit in the decoys. And then they scull down, which is, takes quite a talent to keep the boat straight without wobbling around and try to get close enough to shoot the birds. So that was how they did this. Now, <coughs> Fortunately, my stepfather, Jim Sellers, took a movie camera out with him on a couple of his duck hunting trips. And he went duck hunting every day of the Pennsylvania duck season. Uh, and he took some moving pictures to these on 16mm uh, color film. And I can remember looking at these when we were a kid. Uh, and somehow these got down to a place called the uh, Duck Museum, Wild Duck Museum, or decoy museum, I guess it is, in Haverty Graves, Maryland, which is at the mouth of the Susquehanna River. And the people at, at that, uh, in that uh, museum were very much under the influence of Madison Mitchell, who made that decoy there. Madison Mitchell made thousands of decoys. I remember meeting him when I was a young guy in the early 1950s. And those films, or at least some of those films, have showed up on a... Uh, on a YouTube video that's called the R. Madison Mitchell Endowment Trust on YouTube. And if you go to that link, you can see Jim Sellers, Bob Sellers, I don't think there are any pictures there of the grandfather, Walter Sellers, but you can see pictures of them doing this, the duck hunting as they did it on the Susquehanna River and on the uh, Susquehanna Flats down in the Chesapeake Bay. It's quite an interesting book. Uh, film to look at for me in particular. There's some shots of my stepbrothers, Barry and Donnie Sellers, in one of the boats when they were little kids. So that's something about decoys, uh, Sellers decoys from the Susquehanna River.